Mr. Speaker, I rise before this House today to table budget documents for 2015. Federal budget came out on Tuesday. Lots of Canadians excited about their tax cuts because there's a little bit for everyone in the budget. But some people just aren't happy getting to keep more of their own money, and that includes Rick uh, Rick Smith with the Broadband Institute. I almost, almost made you Ed's son there. I almost called you Rick Broadband. I would be I would be proud to be Ed's son. <laughs> So, Certainly, I'm his minion. Okay, you know, you, yeah, a minion. Okay, I, I would yeah. not have used that term. But yeah. Broadband Institute, obviously a group on the left, obviously a group associated with the NDP, and and you guys are not happy with this budget. Well, this is this budget is great if you like inequality. This budget is great if you're one of the richest five percent of Canadians uh, that get massive tax breaks from this budget. I mean, this budget. Uh, uh, you know, long story short, the big ticket items in this budget take money out of the pockets of working and middle class Canadians and transfer that money uh, into the pockets of richest Canadians that don't need it anyway. So, I'm, not, I'm not buying so If you like inequality, if you like, uh, if you like a, a, a degraded uh, a social safety net, this budget is for you. I, I'm not buying that it takes money out of the pockets of middle class Canadians and hands it to the wealthy because it's it's a tax break i mean whether it's a tax cut or a credit and the creative accounting they use to get there you only get to have more money if you're paying taxes already so it is a tax break it it's not taking money from someone making thirty thousand dollars a year and giving it to mr rockefeller in his tower up there well but here, here's my question right let I me mean, let's talk about tax cuts right well, we we actually on occasion advocate for tax cuts for example, uh, the working income tax benefit uh, that was actually introduced by the, by the Conservatives mm -hmm. a few budgets ago, uh, we think is a great idea, uh, modeled after the United States uh, program. And basically, it drops uh, lower income Canadians off the tax rolls. The only problem is, is it's, it's chicken feed. It's incredibly small. And it actually doesn't, uh, it hasn't kept pace with inflation. So one of the things we've suggested is, if you, if you want to have a tax cut, why don't, we, why don't we increase the working income tax benefit that would actually help millions of Canadians who need it? Why do we need an income splitting tax benefit that will only be available to about 15% of Canadian families, the richest Canadian families? Okay, so, so only rich Canadians got tax breaks in this budget. But that's still not taking money out of the pockets of middle class Canadians and handing it to the wealthy. Well, it is in this sense. Uh, these the the income splitting tax tax cut and the uh, doubling of TFSA limits uh, are are going to be huge holes in the federal budget uh, within about ten or twenty years. So not not such a big deal now, but uh, but TFSA doubling, for instance, alone will be uh, in excess of twenty billion dollars cut out of the federal budget within 10 or 20 years and that money's going to have to come from somewhere and 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 it's probably going to come from rollbacks in medicare uh, cuts in in social programs that the middle class actually uses but so why you know why, guys why is that fair guys like question? you on the left have been saying for years that the conservatives are going to roll back health care they're going to cut it back they're going to cut it back first off health care is a provincial jurisdiction and they can fund it on their own they don't have to have the federal government sending money but secondly it Parliamentary Budget Office, no friend of this government, has said that the largest single increase in spending is the health transfers, which is, you know, the left keeps screaming is, is going down. No, it's going up. Well, actually, the, the, this, guy, this government has capped health transfers in a very significant way that's causing problems at the provincial level. So, I mean, yes, the federal government is, is still shelling out money, but not at the rate that it should when it comes to health care. And, uh, and in many other, I mean, this, this, this government was boasting yesterday that, uh, that federal revenue, the federal budget as a percent of GDP is, uh, is getting down to historic lows. Uh, and as a result, you don't see climate change mentioned at all in this budget yesterday. You see environment spending at historic lows. You see, uh, you know, a complete uh, absence of many important programs that, that, uh, that we've been advocating for, including child care. Uh, so you know, again, if, if you're uh, if you're a very wealthy Canadian, uh, you're, you are going to get very significant tax cuts out of this budget. If you're not so wealthy, you're not going to get anything. The uh, you mentioned climate change; it is Earth Day, so let me change topics from happy the budget Earth for a minute. Day, yeah, well, happy Earth Day and happy 17 it, it years of no warming, according to the UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, which says there's been a, a hiatus. It's right in their own documents. UN says a hiatus since 1998. How do you feel about that? Well, I don't think Preston Manning agrees with that. 
Well, it's the know, UN's intergovernmental panel on climate change. These are the head honchos, and they have right in their documents, no warming since 98. Um, let me just say that. <laughs> that, that <laughs> it's a tough that one, isn't it? The, no, the, the, this whole question of the science underpinning climate change is the most rigor rigorously researched scientific question ever. Um, so I'm quoting of, the science number, back to you. And the number of, uh, actually, it is the science that, that you've quoted is not accurate. We've, we've, the, the last few years have been some of the warmest years on record. Um, and any Canadian that's, uh, you know, we, people know this in their gut, that the weather has gone haywire, um, whether it's uh, warming winters or uh, more volatile storms. Uh, you know, I live in Toronto, so lake levels are all over the map. Uh, people know that uh, we're seeing climate change effects now, and they want to see some action. I'm, and I'm actually delighted that, uh, that in some parts of this country, conservatives are getting on board with, uh, with the notion of climate change action, just not in the federal government, where climate change is a dirty word. <laughs> the, uh, the tax grab in Ontario, you're happy with that, though, the carbon uh, pricing coming in? You know what I call Even that? Jeff Rubin says that's it's going to be a tax grab. Not, see, I'm going I'm to disagree with my friend Jeff Rubin on this one. The, uh, it's, I don't, uh, what I call that is polluter pays. Uh, what I call that is finally uh, bigger companies in Ontario being, being required to pay uh, the cost of the cleanup of the pollution that they're pumping into our atmosphere. And that sounds like a good idea to me. And actually, I do think- you, Do you trust Cap Kathleen Cap Wynne? Cap and Trade was actually the scheme dreamed up by conservative economists. So do, I don't know but why- But do you, you trust Kathleen Wynne? Because cap and trade hasn't worked so far elsewhere, but do you trust Kathleen Wynne to do this properly? Actually, wait a minute, my friend. Uh, in the 1980s, you'll you'll recall that acid rain was a massive problem, mm -hmm. and two conservative leaders, Canada and the U.S., got together and uh, and committed to each other to clean up acid rain. And one of the main mechanisms that conservative governments used to to clean up acid rain was a cap and trade system that r resulted in less sulfur dioxide in emissions. So actually, we know that cap and trade systems uh, can work. They have worked in this country very recently, and they can work again with carbon. Okay, well, uh, you'll disagree with Jeff Rubin, and I'll look at it and say, I think you might be right on this one. When you look at the exchanges, the exchanges, you know, the, the prices have fallen, uh, the yeah. Chicago exchange just eventually shut down because be there was designed, no trading. Sure. Um, properly designed and Kathleen Wynne, not two words that go together in my view. But l let's get back to the budget. I, I know that uh, Tom Mulcair and Justin Trudeau both oppose it. Uh, does that matter that they're going to oppose it? You expect opposition parties to oppose budgets. Is this just the conservative election platform out there uh, for Mulcair and Trudeau to run against? Well, I, th I think the conservatives know that they have a problem uh, on the inequality front. Uh, they know that they have a problem in terms of the vast majority of middle class Canadians feeling in their gut that it's tough to get ahead. I mean, the median uh, uh, wage in this country hasn't risen virtually at all in real dollar terms in 30 years. Um, so you see that, I mean, yesterday the conservative, I was really struck by how defensive the conservatives were about income splitting, about the doubling of TFSA limits. Uh, you know, they've clearly been stung by by this this allegation that these these tax breaks are only for the for the wealthy, they're they're trying to do some damage control. Uh, you know, these were both measures that, that they promised in their 2011 platform, and there was nary a peep really about it. Uh, this inequality issue hadn't really uh, uh, matured as as a big public concern. So I, I think the conservatives are, are vulnerable in this, and uh, I don't think this budget uh, in the next few months is going to be a winner for them. How, how does Tom Mulcair? Uh end up coming out ahead on this with um, you know fighting it he's got Justin Trudeau to worry about as well you're more interested in in the NDP side but how does Mulcair uh, fight against a, a budget that says to people we're gonna put more money in your pockets and, and you know you can make your points but a lot of people are just gonna hear I get a tax break well I mean the, the fact of the matter is this this budget is, is not gonna put money uh, in the pockets of a lot of people that's uh, gonna put a lot of money in the pockets of a few people and I think that'll become increasingly evident uh, in the next few months. All right, Rick, good talking as Thank always. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Happy Earth Day. <laughs>